worth it, and we try to do it every week. I think we've definitely developed a reputation here. I think folks know who we are. Uh, they're familiar with what we teach. Um, <clears throat> I think there's still a lot of territory to be covered. I think things are going wonderful. Right. And I really think that Johnny is one of the best preachers I ever heard in my life. And he's got two sons that are going to follow in his steps. So I wouldn't want to be anywhere but here. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. I despise, hate, detest, and loathe the Church of Christ and everything about it. I, I hate them. I really do. The better I get to know them, the more I hate them. I, I want to rid the world of the Churches of Christ. See why the atheists don't like the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services are 11 a.m. and Wednesday at 7 p.m. at 823 Starling Avenue. Watch them on TV in Martinsville at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and on Sunday on WGSR. What the? What the? After losing the debate to the KKK, Michael went to school. Just being a preacher in general is not a job for sissies. Uh, you have to have thick skin. You have to be ready to be uh, scrutinized on all points. Uh, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I believe that they were really trying to help us with, you know, in the school that I was attending, was that some of the instructors, they would, you know, they would kind of pick out some guys and they would just be really hard on them for a certain amount of time. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. And as the church continues to grow, people are driving miles to hear the truth. Yes, I drove an hour to get here, but it's worth it, and we try to do it every week. I think we've definitely developed a reputation here. I think folks know who we are. Uh, they're familiar with what we teach. Um, <clears throat> I think there's still a lot of territory to be covered. I think things are going wonderful. Right. And I really think that Johnny is one of the best preachers I ever heard in my life. And he's got two sons that are going to follow in his steps. So I wouldn't want to be anywhere but here. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. James over here with you, and we are so glad that you are with us tonight. Uh, didn't get to hear all of Mark's uh, lesson. I never do get to hear all of it, but what I did hear was pretty good. I don't think you had any calls, did you, Mark? Uh, so, but anyway, we're glad you are with us tonight. Here's our contact information if you want to uh, uh, visit with us. Uh, 250 The Boulevard there in Eden, North Carolina, 276-340-2653 is where you can reach me. Or at a word from the Lord at gmail.com, and we'll be glad to uh, email you back, have a Bible discussion with you. Um, I know people are watching uh, outside of this area, and I really appreciate that. I know a lot of people are watching uh, YouTube videos and uh, lessons that we put on online other ways. Uh, DVDs are going out. Got a uh, phone call from a, a gentleman uh, today, and uh, he's a truck driver, and he drives back and forth, and he's talking to uh, different people and uh, actually put me in contact with a man. Uh, down near Burlington, and so we're going to be making contact with him, and uh, and so we know that uh, the message that we are, are sitting, getting forth is uh, going out into all the world, and so we're glad that for that very thing, and we hope that it, if you, we can be of any service to you, we want you know we want you to uh, please feel free to call upon us and let us help you in any way we can. The uh, brethren in Martinsville meet at 823 Starling Avenue, uh, Micah's phone number and Eugene's phone number there on the screen, Mark. Uh, is in uh, Danville, 120 American Legion in Danville. And so if you uh, uh, get a chance to go uh, study the Bible with them, and uh, I know they'd, they'd warmly welcome you there. We meet on uh, Sundays at 10 o'clock for our worship. Our Bible class is at 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings. Uh, Thursday nights at 7. Uh, it's when we uh, assemble for Bible study, midweek Bible study, and then we, of course, down here at 9 o'clock for uh, a word from the Lord, a television program. So we hope that you will take advantage of all these opportunities that you have to study God's word with members in, of the Church of Christ, your friends uh, from the Church of Christ. 
Chris, tonight uh, we're going to be discussing some things. I know that recently this has been uh, kind of a hot topic, and I don't think that it's uh, died down really much. It's not uh, hasn't gone away. Uh, more and more, the topic we're going to be discussing tonight is, uh, you know, bubbles up to the surface, and so we want to address it tonight. Uh, it has been uh, the topic of the buzz and headliners uh, the past a few weeks, and so tonight we're going to be talking about checking under the hood. You know, the idea that, uh, and, and what we're talking about checking under the hood is simply the idea that you need to make sure of what you're buying before you before you take it. You know, before you uh, buy a car, you know, you don't go, well, that car looks pretty on the outside. It's, you know, got a nice paint job and maybe got some good tires and you, you put your money down. No, you make sure it runs. You check under the hood. You make sure that everything's in working order, that the engine's running properly, no no oil leaks, no water leaks, you know, make sure all the belts are good and so forth. So you, you check on the hood, you check it out. There's more to the car, more to the vehicle than just the, the outward appearance. You know, there's more to it than just uh, uh, the, the pretty upholstery or the shiny chrome. What's under the hood is really what's important. And so we want to give you that same advice and encourage you to, to check under the hood. Now, by that, what I mean is, don't just listen to what is being said. You know, sometimes you hear people say something, and you say, well, I, uh, I've, heard, I've heard this be said, so it must be true. Well, you know, you need to check a little deeper. Check and make sure that what you're hearing is really true. Here's why I say it. Sometimes people will give you information, and then they'll say, well, here's a reliable source, and so therefore it must be true. You know, just because someone is throwing out a name and just because someone is touting some sort of authority for it being true does not mean that it's necessarily true. And here's a good illustration. Here's a good illustration. In Nehemiah chapter 6, Nehemiah chapter 6, verses 5 uh, through 7, this is uh, what Nehemiah writes. Now, Nehemiah is trying to rebuild. Uh, uh, they're, they're in the process of rebuilding the... Uh, the walls of, of Jerusalem, and uh, this is what the, the enemies are saying. Our, the enemies are coming along, and they're trying to undermine the work. Uh, Sanballat is, is one of those guys, and, and he's trying to get Nehemiah to come down and have meetings with him and so forth, and Nehemiah's not going to do it. And you know, He says, yeah, you come on down. And Nehemiah says, no, I'm not going to go down. He says, yeah, come on, go down. So he's writing him letters back and forth. And notice this. This was the fifth time, the fifth letter that Sanballat, uh, uh, rice, and the Bible says, Then sent Sinbalad his servant unto me in like manner the fifth time with an open letter in his hand. Now here's what the letter says. Here's what the letter says. Wherein was written, is, re is reported, and here's the letter, it is reported among the heathen, and Gashmu saith it, that thou and the Jews think to rebel for this cause, uh, uh, for, for which cause thou buildest the wall that thou mayest be their king according to these words. And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There's a king in Judah, and now it shall be reported to the king according to these words. Come now, therefore, and let us make, make, take counsel together. So he's trying to blackmail uh, Nehemiah saying, well, you know what, everybody's saying that you're trying to make yourself king and all the heathens are saying you're building these walls and you're going to make yourself king and you've sent out these prophets to prophesy about you being king and so forth. And and even Gashmu saith it, as if that makes it right. See that? Well, just because Gashmu saith it doesn't make it right. Now, I submit to you folks that today there's a lot of Gashmu's out there. There's a lot of folks that are, there's, well, you know, Gashmu saying it, so it must be true. Sometimes you hear people say, well, a lot of people say, a lot of people are saying, well, who's a lot of these people? You know, let's name some of them. And so, just because people are trying to convince you of something being true, oftentimes they'll, 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 they'll beg to some authority as if that is why you need to yield to it. Nehemiah, you need to do this because even Gashmu is saying it. Well, who who made Gashmu some uh, uh, great person? You know, and so that's what we're dealing with. We're talking about individuals that may be uh, uh, 
giving you some information, but what you need to do is you need to check it out. You need to check that information out, and that means you need to check. It's kind of like the car. You need to check it under the hood. Well, some of these folks that are giving some information <coughs> that you really need to check out uh, are individuals that you really do need to check under the hood. For example, here's what we're talking about. You know, recently the the the, the Ku Klux Klan has kind of come back on the scene. They had a big rally back in 2011, and then they had another one uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, it wasn't really a big rally down in Stewart. Uh, they're, they're, even their own attendance was was poor, from what I understand. But notice, here's a quote. And this is not from this is not from the Stewart rally. This is another another uh, march that they had. But it says the K, This is the headline for a, a, a news article. It says the KKK leader. We're a Christian organization and claims the Klan is not a hate group. Well, there you go. They say, just, we, we said it. So it, it's got to be true, because Gashmu said it, right? Not a hate group. We're a Christian organization. Well, folks, let me tell you something. If you believe that, before you believe that, you might need to check under the hood. In other words, you need to find out if that's really and truly the case about the KKK. Is it really true that they are a Christian organization and they're not a hate group? Now, let's check under the hood. Let's go back and check under the hood. Let's check under the hood from some of their own members because I don't want to buy what's being said without checking under the, the hood. Let's check under their hood. Let's see what they're saying. Now, this is a, a statement that was made. This was back in uh, 2011. pretty sure, and uh, let's see what they have to say. But the Klan was basically founded in 1865 on Christmas Eve as a fraternal order, just like a college fraternity or the Freemasons. It was never intended to be a hate group, and that's what we've been trying to explain. You know, I know there's been a lot of trash talked about the Klan, but that's actually it's still the same thing. It's just a fraternal movement, fraternal order. It's like a brothers and sisters. You know, we have these get-togethers, these rallies. We're like family. We come together and have cookouts and stuff like that. Well, now, doesn't that sound sweet? Which is a fraternal organization. It's a family get-together, family picnic. Well, you know, that may be how it started off, and that's exactly, that is how it started off. Six guys got together and they said, we're going to have a little, you know, blow off a little steam. We're going to have our own little special club. And, uh, but pretty soon it was taken over by the uh, uh, guys like Nathan Bedford Forrest. I mean, he was a uh, uh, Confederate uh, 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 officer, and after the, after the, the South was uh, uh, lost, you know, and he had lost a lot of his uh, possessions, lost a lot of his property and so forth. He was, you know, trying to get revenge, and so they took over this, and they started in, in using it for an intimidation. Hate group is really what it was. Now, the... the the intention of it may have been innocent enough, you know, but even then, let's think about this. Yeah, we're a, a, we're fraternity, so let's uh, let's dress up in some costumes and let's just go scare people, intimidate people, and even lynch people and let's, let's kill people who oppose what we're doing and let's use this fraternal club as a vehicle to accomplish our, our end. Now, friends, that may be the intention of it, but here's the thing. That's not what it became. That's not what it is. And if you're trying to, if you want to uh, reform the KKK, your best way to do that is to not be in the KKK. Now, doesn't that make sense? If, if an institution has been taken over and corrupted and become something that never was intended, then why would you continue to be a part of it? Why wouldn't you then instead say, you know, I'm not going to be a part of this because this is what they were in the past. This is what they used to do, and this is what they're still known for. Therefore, I'm going to distance myself from it if I'm not like that. See? So when I hear people say, well, it's just a fraternal order. It's like the, like the Freemasons or, you know, the, the odd fellows. Well, if that's really the case, let's check under the hood. Let's look at, let's look at what they're really doing. Now, you know, we were, we're trying to, we're being convinced uh, that this is a changed group. 
because we're not like the group in the past. Listen again to what, what uh, they're saying. Not all is full of stuff the Klan's done since the 20s. 1922, the Dallas Klan distributed food baskets and cr at the Christmas funds and raised up $80,000 in 1923 in Dallas, Texas to the orphanage down there on October 24th. In Richmond, Virginia, the Klan distributed food baskets at Christmas and donated to the African-American community old folks' home and also had, with the money they raised, 320 homes built. Mm -hmm. This was in 1923 in Richmond, Virginia, right mm -hmm. up here in Virginia itself. The Klan's, there's all sorts, of, I've got tons of books and stuff that's on the Klan that you can get right at the library at Tracy where they mm -hmm. donate food to the African-American community and help build colleges. Mm -hmm. and, I even got one in here where it's talking about them building a church across one of the African American community churches right yeah. there. All right, so see, we're doing all kinds of good things. You know what we're constantly hearing? We're constantly hearing we're not like the clan from the past. We're not. We're, we're not like that clan. But did you notice that when they're starting to talk about all the good deeds the clan has done, we're going all the way back to the 1920s? Now wait a minute. You can't go back and say we're not like the past. And then go back to the past and say, but this is what we've been doing all along. So you can't have it both ways. You can't go back to the past and say we're like the good part, but we're not like the bad part. If you're going to distance yourself from the clan of the past, then you've got to distance yourself from the clan of the past. See that? And so, see, friends, if when you check under the hood, you start finding some things, hey, that just doesn't make sense. Now, why are we talking about this? Why are we talking about the Klan? You know, James, you're talking about this is a uh, this is a, a Bible program, right? Well, that's right. That's right. And here's why we're doing it. Because we want you to recognize that what these individuals are saying is really not the truth, and thus they're rep misrepresenting who they really are and what they really are. Now, let's listen to this. Here's one more. Here's one more uh, clip about how we're not the past, all right? We uh, we don't we don't commit crimes, and you'll never, you will never find a picture of a Klansman committing a crime. All right, we don't commit crime. Let's listen to that again. That's that's pretty good. We uh, we don't we don't commit crimes, and you'll never you will never find a picture of a Klansman committing a crime. You'll never find a picture of a Klansman committing a crime. Therefore, we don't commit crimes because you've never seen us do it. Now that's pretty brilliant, isn't it? You know. B.D. Cooper never robbed a bank because we never found the money. Therefore, he never did it. Right? How many, how many crimes go unsolved because no one saw them do it? Are we then to believe that no one did that? You mean to tell us that we're supposed to believe that just because you say no one's seen a member of the Klan doing something that you didn't do it? And then to say we don't commit crimes, well, the man in the white hood is on probation with the law as he's sitting there. For what? Committing a crime. Oh, see, friends, you check under the hood. You check under the hood and you start realizing, what do you mean we don't commit crime? We don't commit crime. He's on probation. He got in trouble for the last time he was on there. He said he lost his job. And so, you see what we're talking about, friends? When you start listening to what they say and you check under the hood, you start saying, hey, these folks are just getting double talk here. Now, again, you say, well, James, you said you was going to show us why this has to do with a word from the Lord. Here's exactly why. Because groups like the KKK, and there's other groups, these supremacist groups, uh, white or black or brown or whoever, if they start talking about supremacy, eventually it's going to get around to this one thing, and that is, God chose them to be this way. They're doing God's will when they're this way. Now, James, you can't prove that. Oh, yes, I can. Here it is. See, they used to chant this. I get a chuckle every time I hear this guy, you know, count. Say, I have three more words. What? Three words, white power. Anyway, I digress. We discussed that. 
Three words, white power. But see, now they're not ch chanting, uh, chanting that anymore. See, now I understand it's Christ in power, a Christ power. Because why? Well, remember we just showed you the headline. It's a Christian organization. We're not a hate group anymore. Oh, we're not a hate group anymore. We're not a hate group ever. It's a Christian organization. Well, is that really the case? You see, friends, now you see why we're talking about this. Because if someone's going to come up and say, well, we represent Christ, then we have an obligation, yea, a duty, a responsibility to see if what they're saying and what they're representing is indeed what the Bible is verifying. Are they, are they indeed uh, aligning up with the Bible? Are they indeed a Christian organization? Are they indeed representing Christ? See that? And so, friends, what we're trying to get you to realize is the things we're doing with the KKK are the things you ought to be doing with every so-called group out there, religious group out there that claims to be following Christ. Now, most people are going, yeah, yeah, you know, give it to the clan. But you know what? Do you do the same thing? Do you scrutinize the same thing that the denominations are teaching? When they hold up the Bible and say, we're a Christian organization. We're not a hate group. I say you are a hate group. I say denominations are hate groups because they hate the truth. If they love the truth, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments, John 15, 14. See that? So if you love, if you're a love group, then you're going to be doing what the Bible says. But if you're not, then what are you? you know no different than the, than the denomination. So we're going to scrutinize, we're going to look at, we're going to check under the hood to see if the Ku Klux Klan really represents Christ. Are they a true representation? Are they a true representation of a Christian organization? Now, one way to do that, and this is really the easiest way, friends, is just to start asking some questions. If, you know, if it's the case, if it's the case that they're, no, that they're not a hate group, if it's the case they've changed their history, you see that? Now, now listen to the double talk here. We are not like the Klan in the past. So by default, they're saying, yeah, we were a hate group. All right? Otherwise, why do you distance yourself from the history of the Klan if the Klan has always been a Christian fraternal organization? Why distance yourself from it? See? You, you don't get to go, well, 1865 is when we started, and now here we are in 2014. You don't get to skip all that. You, you have to take the, all the history. So is, was your history always a Christian organization? Was it always, you know, a love fraternity? Was it always doing good? Or was it really a hate group? Was it really intimidation? You know, when you bring that up, oh, no, no, we're not like that. Okay, so you must have changed. If you changed, then that means you had to change from something. If you're different now than what you were, you changed from something. See that? So even in their speech, they're telling you, yeah, we once were that. Well, let's see if they've really changed. Let's check under the hood. If the KKK is a, quote, quote, Christian organization, then why do they twist the scriptures? Why do they twist the scriptures? Friends, what you, one thing you're going to notice is every group that comes along and claims to have a special uh, relationship to God Oftentimes, what they had to do, they had to twist the scriptures. All right? They had to twi twist the scriptures to get their definite, get themselves out of it in order to make it fit. Now, listen to what, now listen to what the, uh, uh, these, these uh, folks from the, the KKK are saying. This was um, July 21st on Headliners. This is what they're saying. Now, listen, uh, here we go. Listen to their how they get their white supremacists out of, out of the Bible. How do you um, say these two verses justify what you do? That is only towards the Israelite people, which is the white race, which would be the seed line of Abraham. And that is the white race, and it actually says in Genesis 5, 1, this book, the Bible, is dedicated to the generations of Adam. Generations in Hebrew means race. Adam means I don't, which means the white race.
Now, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Let's, let's back up here. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? what he said? He said generation, generation in the Bible means race. Now, let's just look at that. The generation of Adam, is that really what we're talking about here? The generation of Adam? Uh, and it doesn't really matter if a generation is a generation, all right? So let's just, let's just come down here to uh, Genesis chapter uh I believe we're going to look at verse chapter 5 is where we're seeing the generations of of Adam. Yeah, here it is, Genesis 5 and verse 1. Now, the generations of Adam. Now, he said that word in the Hebrew means uh, race. It doesn't mean race. Notice this. It means, uh, it means descent, family, or history. It doesn't mean race. It doesn't. How, how do you get that out of there? He said, "Well, well, we have to make it fit." So he said, "We have to change the definition of the word." What? Well, isn't that what the homosexuals are doing with marriage? Now the KKK they get all upset when it comes to changing the definition of marriage. Oh no, you can't change the definition of marriage, but we're going to change the definition of generation. Folks, if you're going to start changing the the, the definition of word. To get your doctrine, then you can't complain when someone else does it. Generations does not mean race. All right? It does not mean race. But it sounds good. It sounds good. The generations of Adam, the race of Adam. See, the, and Adam was a white person. Therefore, here we are. Now, friends, that just makes about as much sense as a $3 bill. You mean to tell me that you're going to twist the scriptures like that? And then notice what he says. He says, Adam. You know, Adam means a white man, all right? Uh, and Micah, and, he, and they, they had this discussion with Micah about uh, blushing. Here it is, uh, to, show, to show blood, to, turn, to flush, as if, as if that's the, the white man is the only uh, human being that can blush. Well, let me ask you this. I wonder, I wonder if they've ever thought about Edom. Because look, Adam means means blushing. Well, what about Edom? If you look at the definition of Edom, notice this. The definition of Edom, it means, and I'm having a hard time reading that. Can we drop the lower can we drop the third lower throw there? It's, it means uh red. All right. It means red. Here it is. And everybody knows who, who Edom is, Esau. Esau is the descendants of Edom. Let me see if I pull this up just a second. Here we go. All right. So it means red. Edom means red. Well, that's a, that's a form of Adam. Edom and Adam. Now, they don't claim the red man. Oh, no, the red man. See, the red man, he's not, he's not, he's not the white man. Because the red man's the red man. The white man's the white man. But we're going to look at the word and say, well, that means blush. Well, Esau, Edom, was redder in the face than Adam was. If you want to get down to it, if, if the ability to blush or turn, turn your face red it means that you're God's chosen people, well, then Esau or Edom should have been God's chosen people because his face was red. His skin was red. He could get redder than you. See how silly it is, folks? So we got to twist the scriptures. They have to twist the scriptures in order to get their in order to get their doctrine. Now, you say, well, uh, that's what other people do. That's exactly right. That's what that, they twist the scripture. Now, listen to what they say next. All right. So they twist the scripture on on Adam. They twist the scripture on uh, the the word for generations. Now, let's see what they say next. Listen to what they say here and ask yourself when he says it. Now, where does it say that in the Bible? And listen closely. Because I may have a hard time keeping a straight face with this one. But in fact, Moses told them not to marry these people because they were idolaters. All right, now, let me stop there. They're talking about uh, being separate from all the other nations. And Deuteronomy 7 nations. They're told not to marry them because God's going to destroy them. 
not because they're not white, as they say, but because they are sinful. Now listen to what our, our KKK theologian says. And that's the main premise that God has always been interested in, not about skin color well, or ethnicity, but whether or not you're going to serve him or not. They were having this wedding procession, and an Israelite brings in a, a Mennonite woman, which would be a darker woman of the African race, and the preacher jumps down, grabs a spear off the wall, and stabs through the Israelite and the Mennonite woman and said, Thou shalt never let blood touch us blood. So to me, that would be a separation of blood, which would be a separation of race. Uh, did y'all get that? In Numbers 25, in Numbers 25, they were having a wedding. They were having a wedding, and they brought in a Mennonite woman. And the preacher took a spear down and stabbed the Mennonite woman. Well, I, did he go get that little Amish woman, just jerk her off the little buggy there and run a spear through her? He said a Mennonite woman. All right, it's Midianite. You know, if you're going to twist the Bible, at least get the words right. My word. A Mennonite woman? You know? You know, with, with the Amish back there, you know, the. <laughs> yeah, he killed that Mennonite woman. Well, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, well, let's, but let's, just look at, let's just look at where. At. Uh, Well, let's just let's look at the text here because what he said in the text, aside from the Mennonite woman, the Mennonite woman is not in the text, much less anything else he said. All right, let's listen to it again. Let's listen to it again so that we can, if we can look past the Mennonite woman. All right. Let's see here. Let me get over here to our. But in fact. Moses told him not to marry these people because they were idolaters. And that's the main premise that God has always been interested in, not about skin color well, or 25, ethnicity, but whether or not you're going to serve him or not. They were having this wedding procession, and an Israelite brings in a, a Mennonite woman, which would be a darker woman of the African race, and the preacher jumps down, grabs a spear off the wall, and stabs through the Israelite and the Mennonite woman, and said, Thou shalt never let blood touch us blood. So to me, that would be a separation of blood, which would be a separation of race. All right, so he killed a Mennonite woman. All right, let's, let's just read, let's read the text about killing a Mennonite woman. All right? Uh, Numbers 25 and verse 6. Now, he said it was a wedding, and the preacher grabbed a spear off the wall and, and, and killed the Mennonite woman. All right. And behold, one of the children of Israel... Came, Mark's making me laugh with that. Came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses. Y'all quit laughing over there. And all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Now they were weeping. Well, maybe it was a wedding. I don't know. You know, I, just joking now. All right. All right, so they're weeping. It doesn't sound like a wedding to me. And when and when Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, uh, the uh, of Aaron, the son of Aaron the priest, saw it, what did he do? He rose up from among the congregation, took a, <coughs> took a javelin in his hand, and he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So that the plague was stayed in the children of Israel, and those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. Now, friends, there wasn't a wedding. Let, let's talk about what was not in the text here that, that he said they were. Maybe we should listen to that one more time. And listen, we'll, we'll, we'll listen to it, and as, we, as he says it, we'll say if it was in the text or not. But in fact, Moses told him not to marry these people because they were idolaters. And that's the main premise that God has always been interested in, not about skin color well, or 25, ethnicity, but whether or not you're going to serve him or not. They were having this wedding procession, and an Israelite... It wasn't a wedding. ...brings in a, a Mennonite woman. There wasn't a Mennonite woman. Which would be a darker woman of the African race. There's no, there's no evidence that she, that she was a darker race, all right? 
Then the preacher jumps down, grabs a spear off the wall, and stabs through the Israelite and the men. All right, we'll, we'll give him, we'll give him that Phinehas. We'll, we'll just the preacher. He grabs a, a javelin. He said a spear of javelin, and sticks it through the Israelite man. Tonight, woman. He said, "Thou shalt never let." And a Mennonite woman. All right. Well, there's no Mennonite woman there. But so what he's got right is that somebody put a javelin through a man and a woman. Even now he says this: blood toucheth blood. So to me, don't let blood touch blood. That would be a separation of blood, which would be a separation of race. But in fact, that's not in the Bible. None of that's in the Bible. Now I don't know where he's quoting this from, friend. You see what I'm talking about? Let's just make up the story as we go along. All right? It's bad enough that you're twisting the scriptures, but to even put a religion in there that's not even in the Bible? You know, Mino Simons uh, founded the Mennonite religion. I don't know when it was, probably the 1700s maybe. You know, but there's a Mennonite woman there. Well, you see what we're talking about, friend? Check under the hood a little bit. We're a Christian organization. Well, you know what? I know some, some denominations that... Uh, follow the Bible, that don't follow the Bible very closely, but they follow better than that. You know? At least they know Mennonite's not in the Bible. Now, friends, see what we're talking about, friend? We're going to twist the scriptures to the point that we're saying the white race is the race of Adam. Adam is white. Everybody else is white. All the good guys in the Bible are white. All right? You can't mix with, with races. And just to show you that, that we'll kill somebody and say don't mix blood with blood. It's not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. All right? Now, so if you're a Christian organization, stop twisting the scriptures. All right? Let's just quote it. Let's just, let's just get it out there. If you can find it in the Bible, let's show it. All right? If you're a Christian organization, then why are you hiding under a hood? Why are you hiding under a hood? Now, this is uh, what they were asked. And tonight, y'all decided to come in full garb. Yeah. Um, during the show, will y'all take your tops off or not? No, sir. No, no well, sir. Most of it's a job reasons. I mean, I've actually lost my job in the past for being in the Klan, actually, for doing a show on here. I think the last time you were on the station, yeah. you lost your job. Yeah. All right. So, not going to take the hoods off because the guy on, on the left, the guy in the white, Lost his job for doing a show on there, on, on Star News before. Well, friends, let, let me just talk about this. It, it doesn't really take a whole lot to figure this out. As far as I know, representatives of the Klan have only been on TV on Star News twice. This time and the time we just played. Once where they're wearing the hood and one when they're not. Now, the man in the orange has since passed away. So that pretty much only leaves one person that's been on TV that's been in the Klan, right? So he might as well just go ahead and take the hood off because everybody knows who it is, Chris. See that? I mean, you know, I went to public school, but I know I can figure that out. So why is it then all of a sudden that well, we can't, we can't take our hoods off because we may lose our job as if we can't figure out who it is. So why hide under the hood? Are you, is there something to be ashamed of? Listen, Jesus said, or Paul said, look in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 8, 2 Timothy 1 and verse 8, here's what the Bible says. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of the Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but, but be thou partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. Now, are you, you afraid of suffering something because you're a Christian? You're in a Christian organization? So I can't, I can't let everybody see who I am because I might have some repercussions here. Well, that doesn't really sound like a Christian to me. You know, there's people over in, in the Middle East that I seriously doubt are devout Christians and they're losing their lives for what they believe. You won't even take your hood off. See that? So it's not like, and it's not like people don't know who you are. In uh, 
Romans 1 verse 16, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it's the power of God and the salvation to everyone to believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now, Paul wasn't ashamed of the gospel. Paul went to prison for the gospel. Paul was beaten for the gospel's sake. Paul didn't walk around with the hood and say, well, I don't want everybody to know who I am. Now, if you're a Christian, are you really going to be ashamed of being a Christian? Is that, is that really it? Here's what, here's what our Lord said. In Mark 8, in verse 38, Mark 8, 38, maybe I should put this up on the screen. Mark 8, verse 38, Jesus said, uh, have it up there. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Are you, what are you ashamed of? Take the hood off. You know? Take the hood off. Are you, you afraid uh, of, of what you represent? I mean, could it be that you're ashamed because, well, I know what the, what the clan really represents. And I really don't want to be associated or known to be the racist hate group that I'm really a part of. See, I just want everybody to think we've changed. I'm going to tell them we've changed. I'm going to say we've changed by saying, well, now we're a Christian organization. Well, a Christian organization wouldn't be ashamed. But see, here's what happens when you check under the hood. You start finding out that some people are really not who or what they represent. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 14, And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed as an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Let's go and put the phone numbers up, Matt, please. See that? So, I mean, what are you really ashamed of? Are you really, are you afraid that what you're really going to be uh, exposed is for what you really are? That you're part of a group that is not sanctioned by the Bible is really a divisive group that is really the the hate group that has always been and now all you're doing is you're trying to wrap yourself up in cheap clothing and put on a face, a picture of righteousness. Is that really what it is? I submit to you, friends, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. They're trying to revamp, remake, their image, and how do they do it? No better way to do it than to be, to, than to portray themselves exactly opposite of what they really are. Now that's the way the devil does, isn't it? The devil transforms himself as a, as a, an angel of light. His ministers as ministers of righteousness. That's why the Bible is full of warning about false prophets and false teachers. Because they come in as wolves in sheep's clothing. Well, I'm just saying, if you're a Christian organization, why hide? Unless, unless it's because you know you're going to be found out or seen what you really are. All right? Let's talk about this. Let's talk about one more here. What about this? If, you're, if the KKK is a Christian organization, see, we're checking under the hood here. Then why separate? All right, listen, now listen to what this caller said. I think the man talking in this clip is on the phone, and he's part of the, uh, uh, some brigade up in, in uh, uh, Virginia. We plan to have an African American cover that rally. How do you feel about that? That's fine. I have no problem with African Americans. All right, I have no problem with African Americans, he said. All right, I have no problem with African Americans. But the question then back, then why separate? Why do you want to be separate? Unless you have a problem with all these different races. All right? Now, they say, well, God told us not to, not to marry. Well, I mean, you think if you're going to get in the same room with somebody, you're going to marry them? I mean, if you walk in the same room with someone from a different race, does that mean that you're going to marry them? Well, I can't be in the same room with someone uh, uh, someone from the African-American community because, man, next thing you know, I might be married to them. 
What? It's got to be more than that, friends. It's not about it's not about marrying these other races. It's not about inter, inter, interracial marriages with these folks. See, when you check under the hood, you start to realize it's not really about that. What it's really about is we just don't like you. We detest you. We think you are subhuman. Now that's the truth. Oh no, we don't believe that. Oh, we could we could verify that. Say we we don't have any problem, they say, with African Americans. But listen to this. Listen to this. They ask, Well, why do you want to separate then? You know, why why be separatists? Why be separatists if you don't have a problem with all these other races? I went on your website and it says that you want to separate yourself from them. That should yeah. be our right. That's our right, right should be separated if we want to send our kids to some other school other than to be with black, Latino, but, whatever. But it should I, I be mean, our right. To me, you're contradicting yourself because you say you want to separate yourself, but you got friends that are black. Uh, but, no, well, we've got friends that are black, yeah, but if, if, and, and if you look, do you... Well, let me stop there. Yeah, we got friends that are black, Latino, but do they know that you're in the KKK and that you want to be separate from them? Because you got your hood on. See that? Now that's the kind. Of, that's really the kind of neighbor you want, isn't it? One that pretends like he likes you, but really he doesn't want to be around you because he's afraid he might want to marry you. I, get, I, I don't. That's the only thing I figure out because it seems like it's all about marriage. So, you know, these folks, they, these folks in the KKK, man, they see a. Uh, I guess if they see a. A uh, Latino or uh, a black or some kind of Asian woman walking down the street, man, you better watch out. They're going to go over and marry you. That seems to be the problem, isn't it? Or is it a d deeper problem? All right, now listen to what he said. I want to be standing beside somebody that's at McDonald's with their britches down. I don't the want, my, I don't want my, family to be, my family to be around that. If they want to go to school with white, I want it. That should be our choice. All right, now, now that's interesting. That's interesting. Let's think about this. We want to be separate because we don't want to be in McDonald's with someone who got their pants down. Now, friends, I, I don't know about you, but if someone walking around with their pants down, does that immediately identify them as a race? I've seen a lot of white people walk around with their pants down. I don't want to be around them. You know? I think if people really knew where that, that, uh, uh, that came from, yeah, I started in the prison. People walking around the pants down. It's not just black people walking around the pants down, folks. But you hear what he said? I don't want to be around people walking around with the pants down. Well, wait a minute. That's not that. That is not just isolated to one particular race, is it? The pants down race is that a race of people? I don't want to be around the pants down race people. I don't think that's just a race. But now, but you heard, but you heard the racism come out, didn't you? See. Only a certain race of people walk around with their pants down. Well, friend, sir, you need to get out of the house a little bit more. Maybe you need to cut them eye holes a little bit bigger in your hood. Because I see a lot of people walking around with their pants halfway down that aren't black. See that? And so it's really not about, it's really not about, well, we like certain people. We just, we just want to be separate. No, it's we want to be separate because we don't like you. Now, that's really what it's coming down to. All right? Now, yeah, if you want, if you, it is your right if you want to separate. But here's the thing. Don't pretend that the reason why you want to separate is, well, it's because, you know, I got friends that are in other races and I just want to be separate. No, there's a reason why. Because the bottom line is, you don't think that this other race of people is superior or equal to you. That's really what it gets down to. So why separate? If you're a Christian organization, why separate? As a matter of fact, Jesus said, let's put this up. Jesus said in Mark uh, chapter 16, in verse 15, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, how are you going to go to go and preach the gospel to every creature if you're going to be separate from all these other nations? You're a Christian organization, and yet you're going to go into all the world and only preach the gospel to the white creatures. You're only going to go. You're only going to preach the gospel to a particular race of people. 
Jesus didn't say going to all the world and preach the gospel to a certain skin color. He said to all people, Matthew, uh, Matthew 28 and verse 19, he said, Go you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, if you want to do a word study uh, <coughs> to the, uh, uh, the Hebrew scholar there, uh, look this Greek word up. And I think what you'll find is all nations actually is, is the idea of, of ethnicity. Uh-oh, how are you going to do that? How are you going to go and teach all ethnic groups while you are separate from them? See, friends, you check under the hood, you find out they're really not. They're really not what they say they are. All right? You're on the word from the Lord. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing very well. Uh, uh, I enjoy your show. Thank um, you. I was, uh, uh, I don't get to watch you very often, but when I do, I do. When I get a chance, I do watch. Uh, and for the last... Uh, couple of weeks when I've been able to watch, um, even on uh, headliners, uh, Charles Rourke has had the KK on there talking to, you know, talking to them about, you know, I guess their take on things, and um, and I've seen, you know, you, you have, uh, I, I don't know if you've had them on your show, but there seems to be a lot of talk about you know, about uh, the KKK, and to me, uh, I enjoyed your show uh, a whole lot better when you were spreading the word of the Lord rather than talking about mm -hmm. someone who you may disagree with. But what are we doing right here? Sir? I said, what are we doing right here? We've got the Bible up right here. I just, I just read the Great Commission. I understand that, but you have picked out a particular group, and that that's probably exactly what they want. You know, they're well, being, but, talked, but they're I, being talked about on TV, and that's, that's probably, they probably just happy as they can be. Well, that, that may be. But here's the thing, sir. Do you realize the Bible, that Jesus actually said, beware of false prophets? Yes, you know, sir. Matthew 7. So, I mean, is it not preaching the gospel? to tell people or to point out who these false prophets are? Well, the uh, you, uh, yes, sir, I understand that. But the KKK has been around, you know, for I don't know how long, and uh, the Book of the Lord has been around oh, oh, so much so much longer, know, and it seems to me like, I don't know, I, I got more out of your program when you was talking about um, the Word rather than talking about... Well, I, I understand what you're saying, sir, but here's the thing. There's a time when you can teach and get and give certain kind of lessons, and then there's another time when you need to expose some things that are wrong. And yes, both I, of those... Yes, and both, I, no, yes, and, I understand and, that. Wait, 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 now, now, both, of those, both of those are part of preaching the gospel. The Apostle yes. Paul, when he came, in Acts 17, when the Apostle Paul came into Athens, I mean, the first thing he did was he looked and saw all the religion that were going on, and he took them all on. He said, you're all worse than God ignorantly. Right. Now, they didn't come to, well, now, Paul, you know, you should you should spend more time preaching the word. Well, he was preaching the word. He was showing them the error and exposing the error that they were doing. Right. So, I'm just saying, you know, I don't do this all the time. I mean, this is, last week I ran a debate that I had with a guy from the Christian Identity Group who represented the KKK, and I had that debate with him in 2011, and I reran that last last week because I wasn't uh, uh, I was having some some trouble with my my video and whatever. So okay. uh, I ran that. But other than that, this is the only show. I mean, if you discount that one, this is the only show I've ever I've talked about the KKK and I don't know how long. So you know, it's not it's really not fair to say. I shouldn't do this when it's the only one. No, I've no, done I'm not. Oh, I'm not saying you, I'm not saying you're not fair. It just seems to me like there's a, a whole lot of talk about the KKK and well, the word that you preach. Well, wouldn't you rather hear? Wouldn't, wouldn't you rather hear the Bible uh, expose what the KKK is doing? I would rather, rather than hearing hear all the, the headliner stuff. I mean, all the headliner stuff. That's, that's that's their promo. 
You know, I'm trying to tear them down. Yeah, but I can understand that, but um, I don't even, you know, that's. Um, okay, well, well, I, I mean, I appreciate you calling. I appreciate, I appreciate your, you know, your opinion on that, but. Uh, okay, I, you know, I, I appreciate your show. Okay, all right, thanks. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, yeah, we've got just a few minutes here. You know, I, I don't mind people disagreeing, saying, well, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, but the bottom line is I know that this is what the 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 same kind of thing that Jesus and the apostles will be doing would be exposing false prophets, false teachers, individuals who pur- uh, who uh, would purport to be something that they're really not and lead people astray. And so, you know, <clears throat> hey, if it was good enough for Jesus and Paul, I think I'll, I'll do too. So the bottom line is, so if you're a Christian organization, why do you want to be separate? Look what the Bible is saying here. In Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians 2 and verse 13, listen to what the Apostle Paul said. The Apostle Paul said, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who are sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ, for he is our our peace, who hath made both one and broken down the middle wall of petition between us. He's talking about Jews and Gentiles. The New Testament teaches unity with individuals who are different. Jews and Gentiles worshiping the same God. As a matter of fact, let's skip on down to Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11 and verse 19. Acts chapter 11 verse 19. Now this is the this is a uh, uh, a Gentile Jew and Gentile church. They're they're mixed, mixed congregation. All right. If you want to get down to it, and uh, notice they were preaching the word uh, unto but the Jews only. And so then you have some people coming down when they came to Antioch. They spake unto the Grecians preaching the uh, Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was great with them, and a great number believed and returned to the Lord. And tidings of these things came to the ears of the church. As far as Jerusalem, they sent forth Barnabas, that he would go to Antioch. So Barnabas came down when the Grecians obeyed the gospel. So Jews and Greeks are all together. As a matter of fact, if you look in Acts 13, you'll find that in the church there, there was a man named Niger. Do a little word study on that, Chris. And you'll find out that he was, I mean, that's what the word means, black. So in the, in the early church, there were diversity of people in that Christian organization. Now, if you claim to be a Christian organization like in the New Testament, you will have a diverse group of people, not all white, not separate, all right? Now, let me, let me give one more thing here before we go. Bring the club back. If you want to bring the club, club back, uh, I'm fine with that. I'm, I've been waiting for them. Matter of fact, here's, here's the clip. Well, the point that they're trying to make about Adam being a white man, well, that, that cannot be proved at all. Nowhere in the scripture do we have any distinction between we actually proved anybody's, it 2011 anybody's when you went colors. Pastor Eli James, and he just tore, tore you, James Oldfield, and Johnny Robertson. And you went right on TV. No, We're not the cluds we, of the clan, but we no, can bring the clud back. All right, we can bring the club back. You know what? Eli James, Eli James got spanked, as you, if you saw the video uh, last week. But if you want to bring the club back, listen, Chris, I sent Eli James an email. A standing invitation, anytime you want to come back, you're welcome to come back. And he said, if I'm ever back in the area, well, all you have to do is call him, and he should come back. Because I know he's made trips to Scotland. Right after that, he made trips overseas. So surely if he can go overseas, he can come back to the little old regional North Carolina. You know, So call him back. Call him back if you want to try to, to prove that the white race is, the, is God's chosen people. We'll be glad. We'll be glad to go round number two. That's exactly right. And defend the truth about what the Bible is saying about who the gospel is for, who salvation is for, and who Christ died for, and who really are the chosen people of the Lord. It's not the white race. It's anybody who will obey the Lord. Acts ten verse thirty four. Peter said that God is no respecter of persons, but whoever among all nations will obey him. That's who God chooses to favor. Friends, we're out of time. Uh, so remember to uh, uh, tune in next week. Watch out Watch out for the, the Mennonites. But uh, anyway, until next time, friends, hope you uh, enjoyed the lesson. We'll see you next week.
Hyundai, and then before you know it, Labor Day will be here, the pools will be closed, and then we start looking at autumn. Now, speaking of that, the Old Farmer's Almanac has made a prediction for the winter of 2014 and for the summer of 2015. I know, let's get beyond this summer first, and then we can look at uh, something else. But, uh, well, we've got it for you anyway, and that's coming up, and we'll give you an idea of what you can expect. You may want to go ahead and keep those start looking for those winter coats right now and I'll tell you why in just a little bit. Right now though let's go ahead and jump into some of our top stories of the day. I'll tell you what's coming up in this hour of Star News in just a few moments. Damble Utilities announced just a little while ago that it has canceled a planned power outage that was previously scheduled to take place at 5:30 today, 5:30 this afternoon. Now the planned outage it was supposed to be for areas of downtown Danville, including Main, Market, Union, and Spring Streets. Now, according to Danville Utilities, they've had to cancel it for today, but it will be rescheduled for a future date. The outage will basically allow the installation of new conductors and connection changes for the downtown vault upgrade project. Customers who would have been affected by the power outage were notified earlier today. So if you were planning on it, you had made plans because you thought there would be a power outage in the downtown area of Danville, well, guess what? It's been canceled, so business will go on as usual. That was for Main Market Union and Spring Streets, but it's all